In this video, I'm going to review a new product coming to market. It is a patented card reader for CF Express Type B cards. And it has some pretty unique functions. This is what comes in the box. You get a 20 gigabit cable and a 10 gigabit cable for USB-A connections. A small owner's manual, the card reader, and a rubber isolation pad for the desktop. The functions are pretty unique. And interesting when you first put a card in it'll bring up the current cards health status this is a relatively new card it's showing 100% health if the health is less than 50% that number will flash letting you know you might want to consider uh, replacing that card soon if you press the button one time the screen comes back alive press it again and the memory card information is displayed such as capacity, name, firmware, version, uh, maximum and maximum usage temperature. You can press it again and it'll show whether or not this card supports uh, initialization mode or just low format functions. It'll press it again. It'll show you the current connection speed. It is capable of 20 gigabits but my computer is not. Uh, press it again. It tells you the PCI information, PCI speed. It tells the firmware version of the card reader itself. If we press the button seven times quickly, it goes into a temperature monitoring status. So uh, you can stress test your cards to see how hot they get or monitor how hot it is getting while you're using the card in the card reader itself if we instead press three times it'll come up with initialization if the card supports initialization and initialization is a full factory reset once you're done, there'll be no data on the card and it'll need to be formatted, quick formatted in the camera. You also have the option to do a low format instead. And to initiate either one of those, you press and hold the small button for about five seconds. It says three seconds in the manual, but it seems to take longer, about five seconds. So why might you want these functions in a card reader? Well, monitoring the card health is one good reason. This picture shows how NAND memory card functions. Over here you've got a bunch of memory cells which are strung together to create pages which are combined to make blocks. And a bad bit or cell string results in a bad page results in a bad block. So when a single memory cell fails it takes out a block of cells. Now there are additional blocks reserved to replace those blocks that go bad. But error correction may be able to recover at the cell or page level so you do not lose an entire memory block. But still memory loss or corruption is a potential issue particularly with modern cameras and the amount of data they generate. NAND memory made using triple level cells is the most common. And triple level cells means it's three bits, triple bit. And it only has 3,000 program and erase cycles for a lifespan. Whereas single level cells have 100,000 PE cycles. And in additionally, single level cells only have two states on and off. Whereas a three bit has got eight states and that makes it slower and hotter sometimes hotter and it also makes it harder to distinguish between the states so it's more prone to having uh, right errors read and write errors but i only know of one card that uses single level cell structure for the whole card and that's the prograde cobalts and a 650 gigabyte card costs more than a two terabyte 
gold card, which uses the triple level cells. I'm not saying your cards are going to go bad quickly. They probably won't. But it's nice to know when they're getting short on life so you can replace them before they fail on you at a critical time. Another good reason is to restore performance. One, and one of the reasons card performance degrades with use is because when a file is deleted, it is not really deleted until that space is needed. And with NAND memory, it can only be deleted a block at a time, which causes a lot of data management and program erase cycles. Because in order to clear a block, all the good data has to be moved off of a block to create a solid block with invalid data, which can then be erased. So writing a file can cause a lot of write amplification, which is again going to shorten lifespan of the card. You might think that formatting the card will eliminate that issue, but it doesn't. When you delete a file here, it is simply noted as being deleted in the directory. And then those pages are noted as being eligible for deletion in the garbage collection data by the trim function. The trim function simply tells it it does not need to move that data. It can just erase it. It doesn't need to protect it. Nothing else changes. And because this other information, where the file reference starts and how large the file is, or the length of file, is still available, the file is recoverable. A quick format is really just a delete all function when the card is already formatted. If the card is not already formatted, it will set the file system as XFAT and set the partition. And you might think a full format would eliminate the issue, but it does not either. A full format is really just a delete all function that also erases the file allocation data. And without that information, the relationship of the blocks and pages in relation to each other is unknown. So the files are unrecoverable, but the data still exists. It still has to be erased and managed by the garbage collection function. The other thing a full format does is delete the where leveling table because that can slow down garbage collection function. To actually delete the data on the card, you would need to do a long format using the Windows software or do a secure erase on a Mac, but that is not an option for compact flash cards in OS Sonoma. Or you can use the initialize function of the CF Tech Trimmer. This function erases all blocks within the NAND storage, including the reserve blocks, and marks any bad blocks during the process. This is data on a card after a full format in camera. And this is the same sectors on the same card after an initialization with a CF Tech trimmer. You can see the card has been reset to zero, all bits and all sectors. Of course, this is a p &E cycle for every cell in the NAND memory, so this should not be done arbitrarily. CF Tech states that it can shorten the card life by as much as one-tenth of one percent. But that's not a lot really, so if you have a card that's a little glitchy or you notice the performance slowing down, it's a good option to use. This is one of my Delphine cards before and after initialization. It's not a fastest card, and the USB interface on my M1 Mac is limiting it to less than 10G. Plus, it's not a high use card that would really benefit from initialization. But even still, it shows an improvement in both read and write speeds. And I was also able to monitor the heat generated by the card during the stress tests.
it was fine. I really wanted to test a glitchy card or a high use card, but I was unable to get my hands on one. There are two things that bother me about the card reader a little bit. I wouldn't call it flimsy, but it's light and it's all plastic. It's not heavy plastic. So I don't think it's going to be uh, something you want to throw in a bag without any kind of concern for it. It's probably not that durable. And it has no write protect switch, which I find really handy with Mac computers. And with this card reader, it would just be another little protection to prevent you from inadvertently initializing or formatting a card when you didn't intend to, although I don't really know how that would happen. There is no other card reader that offers the functionality of the patented CF Tech trimmer. And the initialization function does more to restore a card to as new condition than a full format, a secure format, and even a block level sanitize. The ability to monitor a card's health and restore its functionality is significant, particularly with most cards using triple level cell memory these days. The CF Tech trimmer is now available on Amazon and at the $89 asking price I think it is a great deal. And no, I won't make a penny if you buy one.